Hi everybody, I am very glad that quite a few, few people are viewing my orthopedic classes. So, in continuation of what I have been talking to you all people, today I am going to brief you. Once the patient comes back to us, what is that we have got to see in the x-rays? First and foremost is the quality of the film. Quality of film is very, very important. Just like a poor photographer who takes the view where what he wants to do is not seen. Similarly, it can happen because of the technical faults. So, you may see just a shadow, nothing else or sometimes only a film will be seen or the area that is seen necessary to be watched or to be reported, it may be out of focus. If the film is out of focus, do not hesitate to repeat the x-ray and of course, with the advent of this recent digital films and all that, you can actually even go to the monitor and then check up whereas, at the time of printing some mistake is there. X-ray is poor, you should never venture to give a diagnosis depending on a poorly taken X-ray. This is a very, very important thing, quality of the film. What is that we have got C is quality of the bone. This is also very important because whenever some chronic disease is there, the bone near that area gets osteoporotic or it may be senile osteoporosis or sometimes osteomalacia or in some of the tumors especially it may look more sclerotic or more whitish in structure. So, if the quality of the bone is very poor that is osteoporotic for example, you only see a thin line of bone without no pro proper cortex it should be normally it must be thick or even this also will not be there seen properly. So, this is very important so, okay, that means, the quality of the poor bone is very poor only only outside outlines are seen and you do not actually see the stock of the bone that means, the patient is having osteoporosis or second due to primary or secondary all those things we talk about osteoporosis at a later date. Suppose, for a trauma you have sent the patient what is that you have got to see in trauma you have got to see the following points. Whenever you send the patient for x-ray for trauma, the things that you have got to note are number one a fracture in fracture type type is depending upon the line of fracture and direction of the fragments. Then after the direction of the fragments whether they are displaced or in position each is a subject by itself we will be talking about when we discuss about the fractures. After this you have got to see whether there is involvement of the joint. This is a most important thing, not only from the point of view of treatment and it is very, very important from the prognostic point of view and probably from medical legal point of view also, unless you are very careful and assessing it properly and tell the patient what exactly wrong. Suppose, it is a fracture of the knee joint, fracture like this, it does not involve the joint, no problem but sometimes what happens the joint might be involved like this or the fracture line may go into like this or the fracture might be like this. So, if the joint is involved there is going to be irregularity of the joint at the time of union and that smoothness will not be there. If there is a depression or you know, sometimes what happens especially in case of tibia there is a depression fracture this is depressed. If this gets repressed then there is going to be a lot of problem. Why I am telling repeatedly about these things is Suppose, one misses this joint line involvement and does not tell the patient in the beginning itself because of the joint line involvement you are likely to have early osteoarthrosis or that is known as secondary osteoarthritis. So, these things are very, very important involvement of the joint because even in the case of treatment once there is involvement of the joint exact anatomical reduction and strict immobilization of the fragments is very, very important. So, it is anatomical reduction has to be attempted if there is displaced fracture nearer to a joint. Away from the joint little bit of margin is can be accepted, but in the case of joints we cannot anatomical reduction and then rigid internal fixation. This is very, very important and you have got to tell the patient about these things with all this anatomical reduction and rigid internal fixation especially in a lower limb if the fracture is there involving a joint patient might be having some residual disability. 
otherwise we'll get into a lot of medical legal problems and compensation all those things blaming that you have spoiled the joint so one has to be very careful about these things the next point is involvement of epiphysis because as you know in children there is going to be a line like this a translucent line is seen in this area this is the factor that contributes to the longitudinal growth of the person so if this is displaced or injured what happens normally you should see a gap here you see a gap so it looks like that some people may say fracture or lot of people we see seeing this gap they feel it is a fracture so if this is there you have got to be careful and tell the patient is nothing but a growth plate which is seen because the growth plate will not have enough of mineralization that's why it would not produce it doesn't produce a shadow in the x-ray so this epiphyseal involvement is very very important because if this is badly involved there's going to be growth disturbance if the growth disturbance is there patient may have a shortening or lengthening or deformity so unless you see these things and tell the patient so your child has got this the problem with your child the epiphysis is damaged badly damaged he is likely to have growth problems at a later date otherwise after a few years you don't tell them if you miss the involvement of the epiphysis or the physis as we call later we may end up in a problem because the child may have a very bad deformity or sometimes stunting of the growth on one limb or suddenly sometimes what happen so there will be increase in growth also occasionally so you have got to be answerable for all those things so you have got to tell the patient whether this involvement of epiphysis is not or not so these are some of the important factors that you have got to see in the case of x-ray and next the dis dislocations i am just giving an example of a ball and socket joint in this as the case may be glenoid cavity or the establum and see the femur or humerus away from that normal position it means it is dislocated this is very very important similarly sometimes what happen without getting completely coming out of it part of it will be outside like this we call this as subluxation as an orthopedic surgeon the more of our responsibility to see the x-ray and decide if there is a fracture if there is a dislocation of this joint limb involvement all that because very often the radiologist who reports may not be knowing the history and he is likely to miss some of the hairline fractures or chip fractures and all that that's why don't depend entirely on the report of the radiologist and don't blame me either sometimes the radiologist may say that there is no fracture he may find a fracture then what to do under that circumstances doubt comes always take the x ray of the opposite limb and compare then you will be in a better position to explain to the patient see this is how it should look like but unfortunately it is looking like this that's why probably the radiologist not aware that the patient had a fracture all those things that's why he said there is no fracture so that's why whenever there is a doubt compare with the normal limb especially in children very often as i said earlier the epiphyseal fractures are missed and sometimes they say sometimes they are over reported as fractures 